setup, uh, when you have, I just um, try, I'm just trying to briefly remind how to construct a Hamiltonian toric manifold um, with a Delzant construction. So you start with a Delzant polytope, which is defined in the same way with inequalities, but you can put some additional restrictions on the normal vectors to the facets of that polytope, namely the restrictions are that, that can be chosen to be integral, and then you can choose them to be primitive, of course, uh, because they are only defined up to scale, uh -huh. and that every vertex you have that non-singularity condition, uh, then you can write that map. Uh, sorry, here maybe uh, that vector that should be the, the normal? Normal. Uh, Sure. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I'm keeping in mind that presentation for P, which I wrote many times before it now raised. Mm -hmm. I mean, P equals and then the inequalities, right? That's that's P. So it's P. That when I write P, I mean something like I wrote before, like mm -hmm. written with inequalities. Now with extra condition that it's a Dalzan. So then we look at the subgroup in m-dimensional torus, which is a kernel of that map determined by the polytope. And because of that condition, that subgroup, in general, the kernel of such a map is a product of a torus and a finite group. But on the Delzant condition, it just, it, it's a surjective and it's a split subjective. So the kernel is m minus n-dimensional torus. And then that's a, that, of course, is a subgroup in n-dimensional torus, and it acts and look at the, at, the, at the standard action of TM on CM. That standard action is Hamiltonian, of course. And the subgroup also acts in a Hamiltonian way. Thanks to the previous speakers, there were several definitions of Hamiltonian action already, so I wouldn't repeat that. So, so that you have a moment map from Cm to R M minus N, which is a dual of the Lie algebra of that torus. That's a moment map. In fact, that moment map is a very simple one. It's just the composite of the canonical moment map, which, has, which I already wrote, the square of modules. Well, you can scale it by one half but to be more compatible with the physics notations. Not necessary. And then the linear map given by A P star. That's that's your moment map. So let the standard moment map. Hmm? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, so, so, sorry, 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 not, 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 yeah, 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 see, 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 yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, <coughs> and now, we look at the regular value of that moment map, A, But you have to take a special regular value, which is determined by your polytope, in a sense. And what, what are people actually doing is exactly, um, if you analyze that construction, then you just see instantly that that's the level set for the moment map is exactly this one, this moment angle manifold written by quadratic equations. In fact, in fact, if the, uh, as I said, the, yes, <laughs> good that you mentioned that indeed here you have C, right? So that those Hamiltonians that you have m minus n torus section. So that means that you have m minus n Hamiltonians. The moment map is given by m minus n Hamiltonians, right? And those Hamiltonians are exactly those left hand sides of those equations. So here you have. Uh, J equals 1 through M minus N, right? And these are Hamiltonians. Right? 
gleich for that moment map. Right? Exactly m minus n of them. So that and this is this is your a, that uh, the value. <laughs> this is a, the regular value, special special regular value. So in the Delzal construction, you start with a polytope, and from that polytope, you get two pieces of data. One is this sub this group. This group de de defi this group uh, uh, is only d only depends on those normal vectors. It doesn't depend on the number b b i through b b m. But the way you choose the regular value depends on those numbers. So in fact, you choose the regular value directly this way. So in that symplectic setup, when your polytope is Delzard, that's quite a restrictive condition even on the combinatorics of P. Not all simple polytopes can be realized in a Delzard way. So, but if you have a Delzard realization, then you can think of a moment angle manifold as a level set for, the, for this moment, right? <coughs> And then, of course, people like go further by setting up like M by factorizing this level set by the Hamiltonian action of H, <coughs> and that's this uh, uh, two-n-dimensional Hamiltonian toric manifold. So it has a residual action. So that one had an act, had an action of m of T m, right? That's moment angle manifold. When you factorize by H, you get an action of T m over H, which is T m. And that action is Hamiltonian. So this is a symplectic manifold, and the action of this n-dimensional torus is Hamiltonian. But this one is not symplectic. You can restrict the symplectic form on that one, but it, it becomes degenerate. So it's like a sort of... This is called a symplectic reduction. So the notation is like CM double slash H. Uh, but this one is not symplectic, so it's... it's can be sought some kind of presymplectic reduction. So it's it's not a symplectic manual, it's an intermediate stage in the symplectic reduction. And the parallel picture in the toric case is like that. You start with a now we start it's 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 even more restrictive. Well I mean it's not it's not more restrictive probably it's just um, parallel except you start with a complete um, n dimensional Simplicial fan with H vectors Ai. So, for example, sigma equals sigma p, uh, the normal fan. So here you have an, another condition. So that in general you don't have to start with a polytope, but if if you start with a polytope, then you want that polytope to have vertices in the as, in the lattice. The vertices of the polytope has to be lattice points. Um, that's more restrictive conditions than the Delzant condition. I mean, you still can construct a fan even if your polytope is just Delzant and not a lattice polytope, but then I mean, that lattice polytope gives some extra information about the toric varieties, like projective embeddings, and which you don't get from the Delzant. So then you can have K sigma, the underlying simplicial. can think of that as just intersection of sigma with the unit sphere. Geometric. You intersect your simplicial fan with a with a unit sphere to get the sphere triangulation. And in general, even that sphere triangulation doesn't have to be polytopal, right? 
there are simply shell fans for which you don't get, get a convex or even combinatorial convex triangulation of sphere. <laughs> then you write down a similar integral sequence, a uh, similar exact sequence of integral lattices. That's a, a star. And then you look, but uh, corresponding to that sequence here, you, you looked at the, the map of the compact tori, and here look at the map of C star tori, complex tori. Again, you can think of that AP a, a, a star, the same one, as a map of complex story, and then take its kernel, and that's m minus n dimensional torus. Well, okay. ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Since we, we, we just assumed here that 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 fan is just simplicial, not non-singular, then in general you can get here times a finite group. Right. That kind of well, since it's simplicial, if it was non-singular, then you don't get a finite group here. But if it's just simplicial, then you get you may get some finite group. And then you write m stigma equals. Now, what the, the battery of Cox construction of toric varieties, um, which is actually motivated, it was motivated by the corresponding construction of Carvan and Guillaume and Sternberg in, in symplectic setting, um, but that's a non-compact construction. Like what they do actually is they look at the U of K is a coordinates of space arrangement complement, they throw away from this complex space some coordinate subspaces. Although they, they do not usually write them in the way I wrote, like, um, but that's the same space if you think of that. And um, then they factorize by that group, and that what you get is called the toric variety corresponding So as you see here, this somehow also our space is this one. It's also like an intermediate stage, but this in the, this, this time it, it comes here in its non-compact model, coordinates of space arrangement model, while in in in, in symplectic case it comes with the compact model of the level set for the moment. So that's that that's how that's something like. But uh, I mean both cases here and here are quite restricted. Uh, comparatively with the general case which I considered uh, first. I mean, because here you have, in this case, your K is just, again, it's a sphere triangulation. It's slightly more general than the boundary of simplicial polytope, right? But it's still quite restricted. Restricted. I mean, there are very few simplicial complexes which can be obtained as an intersection of fan with a unit sphere. Or for example, you can't get M points <laughs> if your fan is mm. complete. complete. You can get M points from a non-complete non fan, but there are simplicial complexes which you, you can't get from any fan. Mm -hmm. Right, so I mean, and here also, of course, you have those conditions, so. Okay, so now, well, that's enough with that. Motivations. Now let's let's think of what we can do about those spaces. So last time I, uh, no, on Monday I talked that how to invest those spaces with complex structures, and now let's just um, try to understand their topology. So the first thing to look is the cohomology. Cohomology of moment angle manifolds is already quite complicated. It is much more complicated than the cohomology. Uh, this is compound. Yeah, yeah, right. But That's this is not. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's quotient out by now. Yeah, yeah. This this compound yeah, because it started with a complete right. band. This construction can be generalized to even non 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 
non-concrete fence, but you have to put some restrictions on the fence. <laughs> it has to have a maximal dimension. So, okay, now, now we want to understand how those spaces look topologically. And, well, to do that, we'll need the following algebraic ingredient. It's called the phase link. Well, again, it, it already appeared in, in talks, but, you know, for example, okay. It's also known as a Stanley Reisner ring. But I personally don't like very much that name <laughs> because Stanley comes <laughs> <laughs> before Reisner. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> I mean, actually, yeah. <laughs> the input was, I think, uh, equivalent, yeah. Probably Stanley was more established mathematician by that time, but <laughs> it's like Stone Hatcher theorem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Stanley is more uh, is Sorry. polar than <laughs> polar. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I heard that this, this second person's name is pronounced yeah, yeah. Liesner. Uh, yeah, Liesner, yeah. yeah. In, in that book of, of Miller and Stumfels, mm -hmm. it said that calls him a prisoner, right? I mean, I actually, I have Stanley, Stanley said, Stanley, Stanley. Stanley. yeah, this is called reasoner, <laughs> not rising. <laughs> so, and after all, Stanley himself called that space ring, so <laughs> that would be fair. <laughs> so, It's defined as a quotient of the polynomial ring by a square free monomial ideal generated by non synthesis of K. So, you may put grading here, and that's what we usually do, is like that's a topological grading, it's different from algebraic grading by multiplying by 2. So, all, degree, all, all elements are two dimensional, or you can even have a multi-grading or ZM grading, ZM grading, uh, um, so that degree, so multi-degree of VI is now like two times I's weight spectrum ZM, okay? But we usually deal with that. You can refine it to a multi-grading So examples are uh, Again, well, our two simple examples just to... When you do calculations, I'll, I'll, I'll give you more complicated examples, but just to get accommodated with those notions. So if your K is a boundary of M minus one dimensional simplex, so it has M vertices, and only one non-simplex, the whole set, then you have to factorize by this product. And second is a couple two is when k is m points. And that k is a quotient of fully normal ring by the relations like v i v j zero all i for all, all different i and j. Okay. Right. So now. By its definition, that space ring is a, well, we do not, okay, is a module over the polynomial ring, right? And we just denote this just by A. So the projections from the polynomial ring to the phase ring gives you a module structure. And you can write down the resolution, a resolution of this as a module over that one, free resolution. <coughs> this 
three resolution. What is the, the minimum? Well, not necessarily minimal. Uh, establish rule. But yeah, you can you can do minimal. And then you can define the core modules. Free resolution is just exact sequence of free modules of the polynomial rings, which ends up with this module. And the tor, tor groups or tor modules are the cohomology of the complex, which you get by multiplying this tensoring with this, with this, that over the polynomial then. so it's like uh, 0 goes to r minus n tensor over a is that and then you drop the last factor um, <coughs> then after tensoring like that it ceases it stops being exact so you get some cohomology, and that cohomology of the tor modules. Uh, well, and actually, that tor groups or tor modules, it has a it has a ring structure. I will tell you in a second what it is. Uh, that theorem is that is exactly what the cohomology of that K is. Algebra here. I'll give you now another description for this for that algebra. The maps you just construct that inductively. You start with R zero. You can take R zero. So you you want to construct this map. So what you do is you look at that uh, the generators, the generators of that K as a as a module of a polynomial ring. In fact, it has only one generator, one. So because it's a, it's, it's a quotient of the polynomial ring, you can think it as a quotient of the free module with one generator, one. So R0 is just a polynomial ring as module over itself with one zero degree generator. Then you look at the quotient map, so this is actually, you can take this. You don't have, but you can take this as just that one times that polynomial ring. Then you look at the kernel of that map. And unlike free abelian groups, the kernel of the sub-modules in the free modules are no longer free, right? So, so the, the kernel of that map, it has, it, it, it's some sub-module, but it's not necessarily free. You can have, it, it has some generators. Those generators corresponding to the minimal basis in that ideal. And for each element in that minimal basis, you get one extra polynomial generator, and so that's R minus one. And so then you proceed, proceed, and the hilbert Suzuki theorem tells you that you end up at the M stage. If you started with a polynomial ring, if your modules are of the polynomial ring, then you you stop at the M stage. But again, I mean, uh, that piece of homological algebra is not actually necessary here. It gives some kind of um, um, sort of coordinate-free description for the cohomology, so like a um, factorial. But I mean, in order actually to do calculations, you have to write something more explicit, so I'll just tell you that while well, you can write it like that, that's, that gives you like a tutorial description. But if you don't like that homological algebra, you, you can write down some specific resolution and work with that. That's a Cauchy resolution. It's not a resolution of ZK as a module of the polynomial ring, but that, that tor is somehow symmetric. You can interchange that and ZK here. It's the same one. So you can write it like that that k. So instead of taking a resolution of zk and then tensoring with that, you can take a resolution of z and then tensor with zk. And for z, as a module of the polynomial ring, there is very canonical resolution known as the Cauchy resolution. So, and that also gives you a multiplicative structure. So what you get from that is the description of the z algebra like this. So you take the exterior algebra of m generators and tensor it with a, with a phase ring. The ten this tensor is, when I don't write index under the tensor product, I mean that we are tensoring over z. And here you have a differential. And the <coughs> differential is, so 
here, what you have here, that's the exterior algebra. So you have exterior relations here, like u squared equals 0 and ui uj equals minus uj ui for i is not equal to j. Here in z of k, you have, of course, commut commutation relations, like in polynomial ring, but you also have extra relation from the Stanley Reisner ideal, right? And now, what is a differential? The differential just takes, that's a Cauchure differential. It takes exterior generator to the polynomial generator, and it takes polynomial generator to zero. <coughs> and you want, the cohomology is graded, and that term is actually bigraded because you have extra grading, well, those modules are graded because this was graded, and now you have extra grading from the, like so-called so homological grading, because those terms are also graded. So in fact, you have two gradings. The first one is homological, and the second one is just internal. So you have, and the degree is like that. So you have degree ui is, it, ui sits in basically r minus one, so it has minus one degree homological grading and two as a internal grading, or you can write a, the multi-degree even. It's multi-graded, so, okay, but okay, I'll, I'll skip the multi-grading, that's not, won't be relevant. And degree vi is zero two. So that thing is in fact two graded. There are two gradings here in that algebra. And, but when you talk about cohomological grading, you have to look at the total grading. You have to take the sum of those. So, so this, is, this is actually by degree, by degree, and the, that's the degree of ui is 1, and the degree of vi is 2. So that, that, that grading gives you the cohomological grading in, in that case. Is that an isomorphism of <coughs> yeah, that's the A module? Or yeah, that, I mean, <laughs> I was going to say next that, so now this one, unlike the general situation when Tor is not, in general, Tor is not a ring of algebra, right. but in that case, because you have this description, that, that's the cohomology of a differential grade algebra, so it has a ring structure. And that isomorphism is a ring isomorphism. So the second isomorphism has a ring, right? Yes. Well, okay. Like last time, I prepared a proof. Well, uh, not a proof, it, it's a kind of log proof. But, um, yeah, I'll probably have to skip it. <laughs> that won't be a good talk. Yeah, talk without proofs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather go, but I, I, I have talked about that already many times. That, that result I've already mentioned many times. Now I uh, recently, uh, Jilu and I actually got some kind of extension to that our result uh, to objects even more general than arbitrary simply shell complexes. But I'd rather illustrate it in, 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 in several certain examples. So well, as a first corollary to that result, so is there, I mean, in your book, I mean, this one is using spectral Yes, 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 yes. Can it be proved out? Yes, 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 sure. And that was what I was going to do. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> that okay. paper, but I mean, that is a paper. I mean, like yes, yes. I, 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 I got a survey paper on that. Yeah, you got it's it's that that proof of a Z. Uh, which I was going to talk is, is from the paper of Baskak of uh, Victor Buchstaber and myself, and I included an extended version with 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 uh, some other links like that in in the paper. It's called Cohomology of Phase Rings and Toro Section. It's in archive. I think 2005, but that name is confined. Okay, so yeah, in, in at, 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 the, at the time that our MS volume appeared, we didn't know that it, it was even true of Z. That let's hold the Z coefficient, mm -hmm. but at, the, at that time we had different proof with spectral sequences, but that should can be proved more elementary, but still it requires some. So I mean, okay. So corollary is a theorem to the Hoff's term. I mean, algebraic uh, commutative algebraists were actually looking at at, at 
four groups like that already, long before, like 30 years ago, and even more, maybe more than that. And uh, the notion of phase ring was known since like probably beginning of 70s. And um, people tried to analyze that phase ring by homological methods, and so they studied those <coughs> tor groups, but by purely algebraic methods. And one of the main results in that direction is the serving duty Hofstar, which reduces the calculation of those tor groups to the calculation of simplicial cohomology of some subcomplexes in K. It was also mentioned in the talk of, of, of Su Yong. Yeah, but I'll probably repeat that. So that's, and then you get that theorem as a basically a corollary of that calculation. So it's, it's also explained there. So, I mean, I'll use the bigraded notation for the cohomology because this is bigraded, yeah? If you want, I, I, I'll write both in, in both bigraded version and one graded versions. I'll use both of them. So if you want to calculate the bigraded component of the cohomology, then it's like that. Where this one is a restriction of k to subset omega, the subset of, it, of, of its vertices. So for example, if you have some k, something like that, and you say choose a subset of these three vertices, one, two, three, then k restricted to one, two, three is just this one. It's also called some, sometimes full subcomplex or complete subcomplex. So in order to know the cohomology, the bigrade component of that k, you have to calculate the simplicial, reduced simplicial cohomology of all sub full subcomplexes with j vertices, right? The Hoxter theorem actually told you about the Tor modules. Right? But, but for that, let's see, it has like minus i to j. But the first grading is always negative because here we, we, we number them in the negative. Well, uh, uh, algebra is used positive in grading, but that in order to be compatible with the topological grade, you have to make this negative. And that's, that's standard in, in algebraic topology and even in homological, some homological algebra related to algebraic topology. If you look at the papers of people like Carton and Allenberg, then that, that grading is also negative there. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, that's one, and the, now if you want to calculate the, if you want to calculate the one graded component, then you can just to sum up that. Well, that if you sum that up, then you have to calculate now the cohomology of all of all uh, full subcomplexes. So the formula will be like that. Okay. So that just that just the sum of those things with minus i plus two j plus k. You have to sum up those things with the total degree. So that that is that formula. And also, if now if we go back to moment angle manifolds corresponding to polytopes, so if k equals k p for a simple polytope p. Then you can write that down in terms of the polytope itself rather than passing through a dual simplicial complex like that. That's also simple corollary. So it's now you write it that of that P, that all same statement basically. But yes, written in a different notation. So reduce homology. P sub omega where P sub omega is now well it's 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 uh, it's slightly bigger than just the dual of the restriction, right? It's like you have to take the following, you have to take the union of facets which uh, fit into that omega, right? 
that sits inside P. So for example, if you if you had something like the cube and say you number the facets like one, two, oh sorry, two, three, and that back one is four, right? So then uh, that P restrict uh, P sub one, two, three, four is just that belt, right? It's homotopy equivalent to a circle. Is a belt of those four facets. You take the union of four facets inside the boundary of the polytope. So when you calculate cohomology, it gives you non-trivial element in the cohomology of ZP. And well, the passage from that to that one is actually you have to understand that this like well you, you need to uh, look something like Poincaré duality, right? When you prove the Poincaré duality for superficial complexity, that's exactly how you get that. So that thing retracts, that thing retracts onto the k omega. So that's fine. Okay. Right, right. And finally, so that's that gives you some computational tools. So now, if you want, uh, now that I'll call this on the last 40 minutes or whatever, calculating some examples and giving you some ideas on how that topology would look like. Uh, that's one computational tool. That's another computational tool. That doesn't give you the ring structure explicitly. That just gives you the, the, the dimensions, right? To analyze the ring structure, you have to go back here. You can interpret the ring structure from, from that formula by multiplying different components here. That, that can also be done. Finally, well, there is another theorem which somehow sometimes helps to reduce that calculation. So, oh, sorry. So let's say if M is a quasi, I would not say what is that. I mean, again, Su Yong helped me. <laughs> so I mean, he, he, he told what quasi toric manifold is. Uh, I only mentioned toric manifolds. If that's the quasi toric manifold over P, then we get a, um, we get a principal TM minus N vibration P M. That's what you get, for example, in symplectic construction. If you remember, that was a level set for the moment map, and then the action of H, your H was exactly TM minus N, it acted freely, so you get that sort of principal vibration. So, and similar picture holds for, for quasi toric manifold, not just for toric ones. Then, using that, if, if, if you're in that circumstances, in that situation, then you can actually get a more compact presentation for the cohomology of the field. Now, 4 over smaller ring. And here, instead of the face ring, you've got the cohomology of M, which is known to be the quotient of the face ring. <coughs> it's the quotient of the face ring by some linear ideal. And here you have smaller ring, and this is finite dimensional <coughs> finite rank abelian group. So that, that that presentation is like smaller, or you can write it with Kushur, like complex like that. Uh, so that's better. T1 so <coughs> T n minus n exterior algebra turns out this H star m and some differential. So basically that result tells you that The, uh, the sir, this, this is telling you that the sir spectral sequence of that vibration mm, collapses. E3 term. That's the E2 term of that. This is the E2 term of the corresponding spectral sequence. This tells you that it collapses. This e okay, now let's do some examples. So, first one, P is a 5 one. That that what I promised you in the first lecture, I think, or maybe the second one. And let's first calculate its cohomology using that results. 
then we have a seven-dimensional manifold. It's it has five facets and the dimension is two, so it's five plus two is seven. Now, uh, well, from that calculation, it's quite easy to see about that always h1 equals h2 of that v equals zero always because the one-dimensional generators here are only those u u u one through u m. That's only one one-dimensional generators. And the differential sends them to the two-dimensional generators here, so they are all killed when you pass to the cohomology, right? So one-dimensional generator are killed. And also in second, in degree two, you also have something like ui times uj, but those are not co-cycles. The differential of that is not zero. So. I mean, in dimension one, you just don't have any co-cycles. And in dimension two, you have co-cycles like VIs, but they're killed by the UIs. So you have nothing in dimension one and two. The one and first of two dimensional That's always, uh, That's always true for arbitrary K. OK. And moreover, actually, that, that K is too connected. You could have some trivial fundamental group, but it doesn't have it. It's always too connected. Unless P had a, like, unless P had like uh, those um, superfluous, superfluous, like redundant inequalities, then you have torus factors, mm. which makes it not simply connected. Uh, okay, so uh, then, so we have to. What is H three? H three. Well, it's always equal to h minus 1, 4. There are no other bigrade components. And it's five-dimensional. So it's generated by by the following co-cycles, like ui times vi plus 2. So here, well, the elements here in that ring will be denoted like uh, the, the, this, this thing is a, like a, a, a billion group, that, that one, is an abelian group generated by monomials like that, like u, um, the some omega times some w to some i, but i is a multi-index, right? So this omega is just a subset in M, because you cannot have powers of u. They cancel, right, the exterior generators. But we can have powers. So it's just some monomials. It's monomial in U without squares times monomial is V with possibly some powers, right? So that, that's how you can write the basis in that group. Can't you have H minus 2 and 5? Because you have 5 points and... Oh, no, that second one is always even. Oh, right, right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's yes. always like two judges. <laughs> yeah, you, right. yeah, you, you, yeah, and that's... So that's in sits inside, well, that's in the cohomology of that algebra. Well, um, this is a co-cycle. So I mean, uh, yeah, OK, if you write down the, the phase ring of that, of the pentagon, so it's just the, the quotient of the polynomial ring we want through V5, Modulo generators like vi vi plus two equals zero, right? And well, that that sum is modulo five. <laughs> <laughs> so you also have here something like v five uh, v two, right? So if your pentagon is like that, one, two, three, four, five. Then what are non-simplices are the diagonals, right? The diagonals are non-simplices, so those things would be. In the ideal, there are only five elements in that Stanley Reisner ideal, Stanley Reisner ideal. And so that did, you have something like du1 v3 equals v1 v3 and that's zero. Well, that's a co-cycle. And that, the co that co-cycle creates your know, three-dimensional cohomology. And there are no other three-dimensional cohomology that can be checked. And the h4 is like a minus 2 six of that P. That's also Z5. That's generated by 
by five for cycles like ui u i plus one v i plus three right so then d of say let's take the first one d u one u two u v four is like well we only define define the differential on the generators but then you have to extend it by the Leibniz formula so that that will give you something like v one u two v four minus because this is one dimensional u one v two v four right and v one v four is zero and v two v four is zero so that's zero that's a cos cycle and it creates four dimensional homology and also you have so this is since this is a manifold, right? So you don't have anything in dimension five and six. So H five equals H six equals zero, and H seven is now again only one by grade component minus three ten. It's Z because it, it must be Z, but the corresponding cos cycles like uh, say U one, U two, V two, V three, V four. Oh, sorry. U1, U2, V3, U3, V2, V4. So that second degree, second degree measure, it's two times the number of letters here in that monomial, right? That's the second degree. So it's 10, so it's 2 times 5. And this, the first degree is just minus the number of U letters in the monomial. Okay? And again, you check that this is a cost of... So, 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 so it's 4 and 5. Then again, you check that this is a co-cycle, and that represents a fundamental class. And also you can see what is the multiplication here. Let's continue here. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit confused. Why don't you have some other factors, which is... Some other co-cycle, some yeah. other co no, 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 <laughs> in this year, second degree is even lower, I mean, even larger. In for example, in H3, minus... Well, in H3, you can't get anything else. Minus 3 and uh, minus in, in, in H6, minus 3 and... Well, that's... We have some general... I think Suyong mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Like, we have some general restriction of those Betty numbers, which mm -hmm. says that many of them vanish. So, in particular, something like mm -hmm. minus K, 2K is always 0. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in particular, minus 1, 2, minus 2, 4, and so on, they vanish. Yeah, so, I mean... That follows from the proof, actually, which I skipped. Yeah, I mean, that I only give you some ideas, but if you work with those algebras, you can get that feeling, like, what kind of generators can. <coughs> yeah, of course. I mean, so, uh, so, so we have actually that. The, the, and also, you can analyze the ring structure, right? For example, if you take the product of, say, U1 uh, V4 times u2, u3, v5, the product of those two is this one, right? Mm -hmm. And you can always find one here, so that its product with one of these is this one, right? Mm -hmm. and there are no other non-trivial multiplications. So that means that cohomologically it looks like as if, it is wo if it was the following manifold. The connected sum so you have S3 and S4, and you connect sums as five, five times. That's connected sum. So five. Right? That's that's that that's what this calculation tells you. Just you combine everything, all information in that homology isomorphism, right? And then you can ask if this cohomology isomorphism is induced from a from a morphism. So but I mean before I tell you in the last bit, I mean I let's let's do the second example of two. Well I, I won't do that, I'll just tell you that if F P is an M one, then you can do similar calculation, but that it becomes more involved. Uh, but still you can do that, it's like in a regular way, you, have, you can use this result because of an arbitrary polygon you have a toric manifold, a toric variety, non-singular one, 
you can calculate that, that easily that E3 term because you know everything about the cohomology of four-dimensional toric manifold. You can, from that, you can calculate the dimensions. And so you get the answer like that. And by combining those two, you can get something like, more generally, similar poles. But this connected some which be a bit more complicated, like that. So it's connected some from k plus 3 to m minus 1, as k times S M minus K minus K. Oh, sorry, M plus two minus K. And then connect some of this like K minus two times M minus two K choose K minus one times. Okay, that's complicated. Connected some of sphere products, right? <laughs> so if M equals five, then you get this one. So what you do actually to get this, you just calculate the, the, the dimensions, right? To calculate the dimensions, you use this one, and from that you can easily calculate it, the dimensions from the from the information about the cohomology of the toric manifold, and then from this one, you, from that result, you calculate the multiplication, and you observe only that there are non-trivial products of length two, like like in that situation, this pentagon, that like some, something in complementary dimension gives a fundamental class, which means that cohomologically it looks like the connected sum of sphere products. In, 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 in every connected sum component there are product of two spheres. Okay, and then, then the, the, the dimensions are given from uh, Okay, and in fact, now, so that we, we, we did that calculation, but then uh, here the face paper of Bosse and Mersman who showed that actually hmm, well we also realized that but in a, slight, a bit later and in, in, a, in a different uh, way but then uh, from the paper of Bosse and Mersman well that, that basically uh, both Bosse and Mersman and us we understood that those moment angle manifolds are the same as complete intersection of quadrics like I described in the, in the very first lecture once we understood that then we can use the results of people who studied the topology of those complete intersections. It turns out that that topology was studied for quite a long time and uh, some results were obtained in that direction. In particular, from that result it can be extracted that actually, that, that let me say that this is theorem due to McGovern. The McGovern like calculated the uh, uh, homotopy type of certain complete intersection of quadrix, real quadrix, and then Bosio and Mersman adopted that calculation to moment angle complexes. So from by combining the theorem of McGovern with that interpretation, uh, you can say the following. Assume P is obtained from, from the simplex by N m minus 1 volt vertex cut. So you cut a vertex out of that simplex, you iterate you this, 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 this many times, right? So what that means? That like you start with a simplex, like so you already drew these pictures. You start with a simplex and you start cutting vertices. So that first you get something like this. Okay, then you get something like this. And then you can get something like this. And so on. Okay? So you you apply that that procedure this many times, and then you get some polytope. In general, you can, get many, you can get many combinatorial polytopes. For example, if you do it three times, then you can, can get three different polytopes. It doesn't it does matter. Here, it doesn't matter which vertex group to cut. But at this stage, it matters which vertex group to cut. There are three choices. This one, this one, or that one. So that gives you different. But it doesn't matter which way you proceed. Once this is true, then then that P is homeomorphic to the connect sum to this connect sum. But with 
Now the m, m is also appears here. So it's m minus m plus 1, sk times sm plus m minus k, connect some k minus 2. Okay. So if, uh, you can get every every polygon right by cutting a vertex from a triangle, cutting vertices from a triangle. So that's why this in particular specializes to this one. So when n equals two, from if you put n equals two here, then you get this one, and if you put m equals five, then you get this one. So that theorem tells you that actually you can remove cohomology in all those calculations. So in fact, that, that homeomorphism is induced from, is that ho homology calculation is induced from the homeomorphism. But that's, that's not at all trivial. I mean, it requires some surgery techniques and also. So in fact, now that I can fulfill my promise that I, that I can tell you that, that the, the moment angle manifold corresponding to a pentagon, if you remember that when we work with complex manifold, it also corresponding on the dual language of when we apply the Gale transform, it corresponded to that configuration of five points in, in a, in a one-dimensional complex space with the origin inside. The, the, the corresponding main, the, those corresponding when the origin was here and here were quite simple. There was like, remember, there was three different possibilities. Yeah. Like, and there was like S5 cross S1 cross S1, then S3 cross S3 cross S1. And the la latest one, which I didn't tell you, is this one. It, it, you see, it's already quite complicated. Actually, what it, but when you uh, look at it in this way, uh, then once this, this origin somehow crosses this segment, right, then the corresponding manifold experiences some sort of surgery. So this, this you can hear explicitly. That's a surgery which, uh, which uh, makes S3 crosses 3 from S5 crosses 1. That's an easy surgery, right? But that the one which uh, comes from this one to this one is quite a complicated sort of equivalent surgery. So it's, that's, that's, that's what's going on here. OK. And also, also, uh, so I mean, uh, that theorem tells you that sometimes, for some p, you can describe the topological type of that p. It's quite complicated, but not too complicated. I mean, it's still like the cohomology ring is quite simple. I mean, it just too many summons, but the summons are easy, right? The, the general structure is defined that is quite simple, right? You just take products of squares and you connect summons. That's not that they're scaring numbers, but nothing scaring in the general structure, right? <laughs> also, and then it, it's also true that uh, that's another observation. If if that is a connect sum, connected sum, sum of sphere products. And not necessarily of this type. I mean, there are other polytopes for which that P is a connected sum of sphere products, right? Not necessarily the vertex cuts. And P prime is a vertex cut of P, right? This vertex cut. This VC is vertex cut. <laughs> I don't know what to write. <laughs> OK, so then that P is also a connected sum. Down like that. Okay. So for some polytopes, well, in particular, that was recently proved also that by some other guys that if, if, if P is a dual to cyclic polytope, then then that P is a is a is a connected sound like that. So if you vertex cut the cyclic pole, the dual to the cyclic polytope, you also get something. The understanding is the moment angle is a big task. Yeah, so that's that's a quite a challenging problem. In fact, what is not known, I mean, uh, let me tell you some other sort of story that uh, maybe. That I mean, in general, for oh, so that P is not a connected sum of S of the road, S K times S plus S K 
for our train B. I mean, people from that perspective who work with kind of complete intersection of coordinates even conjecture that at certain point, but for, from the moment angle perspective, that's, that was true from the beginning, that was clear from the beginning, that it, this cannot hold in general. For us, it was surprise that for so many P it is like that, because if you do calculation with cohomology ring, then you can easily see that for many polytops you can get three. W w what is this thing topologically, right? It, this means that you can only, see, only get Two, two non, the, the, the product of length two, non-trivial products are only of length two, right, in the cohomology. It's uh, like uh, you, you, cut, you can cut a vertex from a cube, or you can cut two edges, two non-adjacent edges from the cube. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, if you cut two edges from a cube, this, this sort of polytope, so you cut three edges, then you cut third edges, then you get what's called astrocyhedron, the stash of polytope. For all those polytopes, that piece not like that. Okay, so it just, it's a miracle that it's like that for so many polytopes, no? And also, that is, but it's not known what is it. But what is, and let P for this, is not known. I mean, <laughs> that's an open. I mean, there are no known examples of concrete manifolds, which are moment angle manifolds, apart from this. Ah, which does not have. <laughs> yeah, that structure. I mean, so then you have more than three. No, no, I mean, well, you, you can have a product of all-dimensional spheres, arbitrary product of all-dimensional oh, spheres, exactly. from the product of simplices, right? But you can't get anything apart from product of all-dimensional spheres and uh, connected sum of sphere products, I mean, explicitly. I mean, there are some manifolds like this one, which you don't know what they are. You know that they are not like that, but you don't know what they are. So if someone tells me that that manifold, which is not like that, is a moment angle manifold, that, that would be nice. <laughs> okay. The other basic polytope, for instance, the or... <laughs> 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 it's a very three-dimensional case. Yeah, even. Yeah. All the three-dimensional cases is very difficult. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's. There are two other. Well, okay, let's let's do the third example, which is not of the polytopal type. So the K is M points. Again, let me remind you that the U of K, now let's do this complement subspace arrangement. That's, that's nicer than the moment angle complex in that case. So you throw away of all co-dimensions planes, that the corresponding phase ring is also like that. It's like you take the quotient of the polynomial ring, modulo V i, V j equals zero, for i is not equal to j. And, well, in, in that algebra, which you, you use as a, which you do, uh, in, in that algebra, uh, the co-cycles, you can calculate explicitly all the co-cycles and co-boundaries, which the co-cycles, which give non-trivial cohomology, on the those which give non-trivial cohomology, are uh, like ui1, ui2, on u i k minus one v k v i k right this is a cycle i mean with, with different indices i would not write it with different different indices so when you differentiate that then u goes to v and it cancels due to that relation the co-boundaries are are like uh, some some of them vanish in the cohomology because they come from the co-boundaries of that form if you take this differentiate, then you get an alternating sum of those things, right? So some of them cancel in the cohomology. And actually, there are no other cohomology classes. So you get, um, you get, well, one, one and two-dimensional cohomology is, is trivial. And now you calculate the cohomology in that degree. It's just the, a dimension of, uh, H minus K or rank. Well, I should should write rank, yeah, because it's integral. 
I made two k of that k. That's the number of this cycle. The number of this cycles is m. You can choose this arbitrarily, and then you choose this in the complement to that m. So it's like m minus one. Choose k minus one, right? That's that's m stands for this v, and then you choose k minus one u from that number, right? That's the number of cycles of that form. Okay, m times the binomial coefficient, and the number of this one is just m choose k. So that's the dimension of the cohomology is k minus one m choose k. Okay, for uh, 2 less than or equal to k less than or equal to m, right? In one, if, if k equals 0, 1, it's 0. Right, and then the multiplication is trivial in this case. Well, by the obvious reasons, because if you multiply two cycles of that form, then you get two different v's here. So either, if they, if they were different, then that, that, that will cancel due to that relations. And if they were the same, then you get a co-boundary of a different sort, with not of that sort, but I mean, it's still a co-boundary. <coughs> so. So again, we get therefore we get the, that calculation tells us that we have the following homology ring isomorphism u of k for that particular k m points, right? This one, that's continuation of the example, is isomorphic to the. So the the multiplication in trivials and it that means that cohomology like the wedge of spheres, the bouquet of spheres. Right. So it's similar, it's similar sort of notation, yeah. like wage and wage. Same. So <laughs> so the wage of many spheres. Yeah, same guys. So this, yeah. yes, this this is like wage of that many this k plus one spheres, and then you have spheres of different dimensions, right? Uh, and there is a theorem. Very old, also quite recent. Well, maybe 2006. Not old, not very recent already. Sorry. Very old. Very old. So that actually U of K is homotopy equivalent to that wedge. Well, that isomorphism is induced by. Uh, homotopy equivalence, not homeomorphism, but just homotopy equivalence. So, uh, for example, again, as I promised you, if k is three points, then u of k is just c3 without that one equals that two equals zero, that one, that two equals that three equals zero, that one equals that three equals zero. I have to throw away three coordinate lines, co-dimension two planar lines from three-dimensional space. As I said, that even that is not very easy to understand what is that, so that tells you that it's a wedge of three three dimensional spheres and two four dimensional spheres. Okay? You plug m equals five here. Uh, m equals three, sorry, here. And this one. Well okay, three dimensional sphere are easy to see. They're just unit spheres in normal direction to those lines. But the four dimensional spheres are less easy to see. But still, that, that one we knew before. That, that, that can be done by the suspension argument some homotopy topology exercise. But in, in, starting from four points, that's, that, that's not, that wasn't clear to us. So that's, and also, also, same holds if k is a so-called, if k is a, just a skeleton, um, I skeleton of the simplex. So if K is an I skeleton of a simplex, then you also get a wedge of spheres of different dimensions. That's also the theorem. And finally, 
if k is a shellable complex. I would not tell you what shellable is, that's just some combinatorial definition then of that k in a range of spheres. And also, well, yeah, that, that basically is included in shellable. So if you have, like, um, yeah, I'll have to finish so <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll just give two more examples and I stop. So, uh, yes, so I mean, in that case, there are many complexes, K. none of them are polytopal, right? In polytopal case, you can't get wedge of spheres because you have a manifold. It's a manifold, it can be a wedge of spheres, apart from just a very trivial example when you get one sphere. But let me just compare two examples, like comparison example. Yeah. A comparison example would be when you have. Okay, let me write it here. Uh, yeah. well, if, if you compare that calculation to that calculation, then you get the following. You see that the numbers here are similar. I've, I've erased that, but it's k, k minus mm -hmm. 2 minus the binomial coefficient. In here, you have also, well, with the shift, right? Same. So let me illustrate that. So if k equals the four points, then that k is homotopy equivalent to S3 wedge six times wedge S4 wedge eight times wedge S5 three times, right? And if uh, k p say is a boundary of the hexagon, so here you have four, and here you have six somehow, then that p or that k p is a uh, hom homeomorphic to Oh, sorry, no, 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 I don't want to take this one. That, that, that's also okay, but I mean, I'd rather take the... That's a, that, that was like a three-fold vertex cut of a triangle, right? The hexagon. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather take three-fold vertex cut of the three-dimensional syntax. And then apply... Well, then you can see that more... You can do that the, 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 the same one also, but something mix up, and you, you won't see that very clearly, what I want to show you. So we just complement that sphere to, to the full dimension by the complementary sphere, put that into the product, and replace the wedge by the connected sum sign, and you get it. So the nature of that phenomena is not clear. Oh, I mean, like, what is the topology behind that? Yeah. Because you have four points, but this is a... Yeah. This is delta 2 or delta 2? What is delta 2? Yeah, well, delta 3. If you do delta 2, well, what's wrong with delta 2? Why I didn't write it? Because here you have, now for delta 2, you have something like S3 cross S5, then S4 cross S4, and then S5 cross S3. So that two you can combine here, and then it mixes. Ah, <laughs> so, <laughs> but in that case, they, they, they somehow split. <laughs> okay, so that, that's a question which I'd like to answer. <laughs> but, so well, there are some ideas, but well, in fact, I, I'm very sorry. I very briefly tell you I want go, to go back to complex structure because it's the most new and intriguing subject. I will just tell you that how to calculate in a similar way. You can calculate the Hoch numbers for those manifolds with complex structure. So if if x p is a non-singular toric variety, projective toric variety corresponding to P, right? If you're in that situation, like in this zone, so that you get a final end, and also you assume that M plus N is even, then you get a vibration that P with 
That's a holomorphic vibration. You can make it holomorphic using the complex structure and holomorphic vibration. This fiber, this fiber T2 to the S, right? That's a complex torus, but compact complex torus, not algebraic one, right? A billion torus. Huh? So, and then the There is a theorem. I would say it's theorem, but it's still work in progress of one of my students. Don't ask me too much about the details. I <laughs> deliberately postponed the test to the very end. <laughs> The dimension of ZP I would like it to be even, so it's a complex manifold. The fiber, the dimension of the fiber. Ah, yes, yes, okay. <laughs> It doesn't, well, I mean, yeah, 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 uh, yeah if, if you want to keep S, I'd better write that, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so then you can calculate the Hodge cohomology. Hodge. Or the del Bocco homo, I mean, um, no, I'll better write Dow Hodge numbers. So that del Bocco homology is now you look at this differential. It's a complex manifold, you write down the del Bocco complex, it has two gradings there. Is can be calculated like that. So now you still have you have two gradings, but they are different gradings from those we had before, right? They are Hoch, now they are Hoch by gradings in the Dolboko homology. So it's like that. Similar, similar to that description which I had with toric varieties about the degeneration of E3 term. So now you have like that. You have an exterior algebra on. Two, uh, two S generators on that many generators, like in the in the in the topological case, but now this generator split between holomorphic and anti-holomorphic, and now you tensor with the cohomology of your toric manifold, and you have a differential. So, well, now this psi i's are holomorphic differentials, so they are. The corresponding classes I in H. Well, let me say just they are just differential forms of type one zero of the torus. Okay, and eta I are the anticolomorphic differentials of the torus, and the cohomology of XP, the, 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 the Dolbrok of homology of XP is just the sum of H, say, Q, Q. It's those Hodge numbers vanish if the, the, the holomorphic and anti-holomorphic degree are not equal, right? Um, because of the hard dashed theorem, for example. So that, and the differential, it just sends that's a dot board differential, I would rather write it like that. So that it's not it, torus. Sorry? It's not complex torus. It's a complex yeah, torus. Yeah. Well, I would rather say <laughs> I mean yeah, there is a clash in terminology. I mean complex I would say that complex is like a complex manifold. So it is yeah. complex because it's a complex manifold, but it's not algebraic geometers complex torus, yes. Oh. I mean it's 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 like a billion variety, a billion algebraic variety. It's not C star torus, yeah. It's not C star torus, it's compact torus, but it's still a complex variety, right? So. <laughs> yeah, that's a Hodge decomposition in the world. Well, that's D star cohomology. Wow. No, but that, there is no line bundles here. You just look at the... No, 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 no. Okay, so to what's the name? Hodge cohomology. Hodge cohomology is different. <laughs> okay, I'll just look at the complex of differential forms. <laughs> That's like <laughs> Takahiko explained. And then you look at the Dolbo differential without any line bundles, without twisting. <laughs> 
What was the name for that? Hochko komoji, dolbo komoji. Hochki komoji. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's different from Jeram homology. If the manifold is not color like that, so uh, I mean, so that D. Okay, well, what what should I write? Hoch. Hoch. So D of psi i. So, so, so that that thing is anticholomorphic differential. So it maps psi i to some W i for some. Wi in H11 of X in the lowest degree cohomology, so for I equals 1 through S. So you have to, to well, that, that depends, the choice of those Wi's depends on the complex structure of that P, and you, you just choose half of the basis in the 2 degree cohomology of the, of the toric variety, and they're killed by those holomorphic. And of course, that one. So that one, it, it end, end, end up in 0, too. So that's the 0. And also d star of h star of x p. So that part is also 0. So again, that's that's like a, the, the proof is like a collapse of the Borel spectral sequence for the, um, for this cohomology. History term. Uh, and so there's a corollary you get that particularly see easily that the the H the Hodge numbers H one zero Hodge number of that P is zero while H zero one Hodge number is S. So they are different. That's because because that P is not color. So that's, that, that's, that, that observation, well, that, that not, was not an observation, actually. That, that's a theorem due to Merzman. He calculated that lower degree. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's too much, yeah. <laughs> Because the boss is uh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe questions <laughs> well, later. Yeah. Yeah, we can have some time okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, everybody is very hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks again for...